Uh, one of the uh, viewers have asked about Ayomaya. Ayomaya in Telugu means confusion. Just we, I used the word Ayomaya. Ayomaya in Telugu means confusion. Because the body is in confusion, Telugu it is equivalent. That's why it appears as if Ayomaya. That's thing. Uh, sorry for using local language. Undisplaced fracture required just immobilization above the elbow. Plaster, plaster up in 90 degrees slab. And displaced back should be admitted to the hospital because of the vascular injury. And can first turn to her. So this is the method of immobilization I told you already. The plaster back is like this one. Methods of treatment in displaced fractures. Closed reduction and percutaneous spinning. You can use closed reduction POP cast and then you can use closed reduction or percutaneous spinning. But if you use Close reduction POP class, you should be seeing about the pulse. While you are flusking, cautious about the pulse. Most displaced fractures are easily reduced by close reduction, but often they slip. So, in order to not to slip, you have to give a slab or K wire. So, but to, best to fix with them one or two K wires, pass it percutaneously through the skin without opening. Percutaneous means without opening. Percutaneously under the image, intense fire. Technique of close reduction. I will so demonstrate their technique of close reduction. So uh, somebody will be somebody will be doing the traction. Right? Somebody will be in the traction. So I will show. So somebody will be doing the traction at long. And I am doing counter traction. Then slowly I keep my thumb under this what is called alecanon and then try to adjust the upper fragment backwards. Try to adjust the upper fragment backwards so that because the upper fragment, I am sorry, because the upper fragment is posteriorly, I will try to adjust the upper, fra, uh, upper segment backwards and a lower fragment that is distal fragment alecanon or the lower supracondyl fragment forwards. So this part of the this fragment which has gone backwards will be pushed forward and the above the proximal fragment is pushed backward so that they will come like this. Then I will adjust in the coronal plane that means it might have gone medially or laterally. After seeing the x-ray whether it is medially shifted or laterally shifted we know. If it is medially shifted we will push the lower fragment laterally. If it is laterally shifted we will push the medial fragment, distal fragment lateral, medially. If it is like this, accordingly I will adjust this one. And then we will see the carrying angle. We will see the carrying angle. It is too much lateral or medial. And then after attaining all the reduction, I will slowly, I will slowly flex the elbow. So that the tightness of the triceps will keep the fragments together. And slowly flex it, but at the same time I will be seeing my pulse. Seeing the pulse of the patient. So if at all the pulse is good, I will try to slap as much as possible. Then apply the sap. If the pulse has obliterated at this area, suppose if the pulse is absent at this area, then I will go back and see whether there is pulse or not. If there is pulse, then I apply slab. So if you are not able to apply slab without, without any flexion or without required flexion, then it is better to go for k wire fixation. So like that. So this maneuver was corrected. The traction with the elbow in the same position of flexion, in the same position of flexion. And then 20 to flexion. If required, the carrying of the elbow is corrected at this stage. This maneuver corrects the proximal displacement and medial and lateral displacement. If you give a traction, proximal shift is corrected. And the medial lateral shift also is corrected. Proximal and medial shifts are better corrected by traction. And then this is the way I have seen. And then this is the way applying traction with the, this, the same flexion like this one. Then that is that is the first this is underlined then the second then the second one is this is the one oh. applying traction with the elbow at 20, uh, at 20 this one this is the traction and then now correcting the what is called side to side tilts as well as proximal shift or lacrimal and then slowly flexing flexing the elbow after aligning the distal fragment, all the corrections, slowly flexing it and then applying the slab like this. 
Traction in flexion, pressure over the electron, traction is maintained as the elbow is flexed beyond 90 degrees. Throughout this maneuver, the radial pulse is failed. If it is obliterated in flexion, the elbow is extended again until the pulse returns. If it is necessary to make check x-ray after 48 hours and after one week, if no residual displacement occurs, the plaster part is removed after three years. If it is not possible to achieve good reduction by closure, it is better to do the what is called open, uh, open reduction. If the fracture gets re-displaced after reduction, better to open it again. At, as a first line of treatment in open fractures. If there is already open fracture, compound fracture, there is no closure treatment because it's already open, you would require the open reduction. Those requiring exploration of the brachial artery, if the brachial artery is damaged, when you want to repair the brachial artery, then it is better to, it is custom, it is definitely you have to open the fracture and then apply the track and apply the KYs. Continuous traction is no longer used now, I told you already, there are two tractions. One is a Dunlop traction, that is skin traction, Smith's traction, that is KY traction. That is not being advocated now for practically, but theoretically, you may be given a question. That is why it requires, in cases when they are presenting very late, after some time, 10 days, 11 days, with a huge swelling comes, you cannot be able to reduce it, then it is better to have a traction for what is called traction, for, the, for your first step traction, you, you give traction by Dunlop traction or Smith traction, not by your manual traction. You keep it for some time. The traction may be given with the K-wire passive through the electron or with a below knee skin traction. That is Smith traction or Dunlop traction. So after Priya, that is how it has reduced, it has been reduced, the K-wire has been fixed and this, this is the X-ray. After that you can see there is a union of this one. The patient is able to live so all the moments after eight months. And this is about another injury, which is called open fracture. They have been reduced openly and k wire has been fixed. And this is like this. After six months of this case, this is follow. The complications are, immediate complications are injury to the brachial artery. Because the sharp edge of the fractional fragment, the artery is there. Most often, enough bed gets through the collaterals around this one. Keep the limb alive. It try to keep the limb alive most of the time. There may not be the anguinous symptoms, depending on the collateral circulation. Sometimes the circulation is not keep the links, may not be able to keep the limb alive, but only to structural integrity can be maintained. That is, goes into what's called, suffers from ischemic damage, muscle dies of ischemia, and go to what is called Oakman's ischemic contracture. But contracture is a late term, it is a delayed complication. In the first instant, it is workman's ischemia. So at the stage of workman's ischemia, you may sometimes can recover it, reverse it. At stage of workman's ischemia, you can reverse it. So the vascular compromise may result in gangrene. If there is a 100% vascular compromise, it may result into gangrene. Injury to the nerves, maiden nerve is the most commonly injured nerve. Frequently asked, this is maiden nerve is the commonest nerve that is injured, that is the victim. Radial nerve is also sometimes injured. Spontaneous recovery acts in most of the time. That is a neuropraxic type, neuropraxia, where there is only anatomic, no anatomical discontinuity, only physiological interruption. The recovery is spontaneous, complete. Within few weeks, there is no motor march. All muscles will recover at once. That is neuropraxia. Early complications of workman's ischemia due to the occlusion of the brachial artery by the supracondylar fracture. Actually, it is not the brachial artery per se. It is because of the anterior intrasial artery. It is many times not because of the direct injury. Direct injury may not be there, but because of the vascular spasm or because of the gross injury of the forearm, sometimes the compartment may become tight and there may be tightness in the forearm compartment. This tightness may occlude the anterior interstitial artery, which is the end artery, which supplies the flexor pulsus longus and a part of the flexor distorum profundus. So these two muscles will suffer a lot because of the occlusion of the, what is called, anterior interest artery. If a real brachial artery is damaged directly, may not be Oakman's ischemic 
ischemia, it may go to gangrene even, but Hochman's ischemia many times results not only due to the brachial artery injury, even the brachial artery is normal, even the brachial artery goes to spasm or the brachial artery is compressed for partially, but if the anterior intrusion artery gets blocked or damaged or because compressed by the ischemic swollen muscles, it may produce what is called failure of the microcirculation of the muscles supplied by the anterior intrusion artery. So that will be the important cause. So in that way, anterior intrusion artery, which is a branch of vehicle artery, is most susceptible to ischemic damage because this artery is an end artery. Just like your retinal artery is an end artery. Most commonly affected muscles are flexor pulsus longus and a medial half of flexor distorum. Even flexor distorum profundus also flexor because it is also supplied by that one. But these two are very, very important. The child complains of severe pain, workman's ischemia, he is unable to stretch pain. That means if the sail is swollen, if you try to extend the fingers, he will have a lot of pain because all the muscles in the flexor muscles are under what is called tension, under swollen, under ischemic pressure. So when you try to extend the fingers, the flexor muscles are stretched. Flexor muscles are stretched. So already damaged ischemic muscles, when they are stretched, they will cause pain. So that is what is called stretch pain. Stretch pain. He is unable to move the fingers fully because there is a ischemia to the muscles. Ischemic pain is more severe than pain due to fracture. Fracture pain is there, but ischemic pain is more than the fracture pain. So stretch pain. The child complains of pain in the flexor as per the forearm when the fingers are extended positively. That is what is called stretch pain. A child needing more than the usual doses of the analgesics indicates that there is ischemia. Indicates that there is ischemia. That is what is called Oakman's ischemia or otherwise called compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome because it is a tight osteofacial compartment suffering the microcirculation. What is compartment syndrome? The tight osteofacial compartment. In a tight osteofacial compartment, if the muscles are suffering, what is called ischemia, that is lack of blood supply, they will swell. They will swell. This swell again increases the compartment pressure. That pressure again decreases the microcirculation. And finally, microcirculation fails not only because of the original injury, but also because of the effect also. So that is called vicious circle. There is tenderness on pressing the forearm muscles because they are under tensiveness. Oakman's scheme contractor, this is an emergency, that is why you should admit. Any external band is anything over the skin, any tightening agent, you should remove it. Bangles, everything, any tight structures, slabs, dressings. If you think there is a compartment pressure, you should remove it. And you should see the normal skin. <coughs> Until you see the normal skin. The forearm is elevated and the child is encouraged to move the finger so that improvement of the microcirculation. If no improvement occurs within a stipulated time of two hours, you have to release the compartment because this compartmental pressure <coughs> so due to any cause a proximal artery occlusion proximal artery occlusion proximal artery occlusion that is proximal artery damage or direct injury to the muscles direct injury to muscles or crush injury of the muscles all these will lead to the ischemia of muscles ischemia of muscles of the compartment ischemia of the muscles of the compartment this ischemia of the muscles will lead to edema So that will lead to the increase of the compartment pressure. That will lead to the increase of the compartment pressure. That will again lead to ischemia. And that is the vicious circle. Any of these causes need not cut injury, occlusion, transient blood supply, lack of blood, etc. Even if you sleep, even a drunkard sleeping on the brachial artery for some time like that can produce compartment 
syndrome so this this circles you cannot this is this is not under your control ischemia to edema you cannot say edema to increase compartment pressure you cannot you cannot attack but compartment pressure if you relieve it if you relieve it the pressure if you relieve it you can save this part of the circle how to relieve that pressure fasciotomy because it is it is under the two bones and then fascia two bones and the fascia the muscles are there in tracheous membrane fascia deep fascia the muscles are there so if you cut the fascia then there will open and you will have a release of the compartment pressure that is the symptom that is the within two hour fasciotomy is done malleonian commonest complication of supracondylar fracture and then results in the cubitus varus deformity this is because of the fracture because the fracture unites with the closed distal fragment tilted these are of three important causes for the what is called three important causes for the cubitus varus one the distal fragment most of the time goes medially the distal fragment most of them tilted medially and then distal fragment rotated medially usually the distal fragment shifted medially tilted medially rotated medially and then posteriorly also so all these causes a cubitus varus deformity the main important point of cubitus varus deformity is there is a horizontal tilt horizontal rotation and a posterior shift and horizontal tilt horizontal coronal tilt horizontal rotation coronal tilt horizontal rotation and posterior shift all these can cause what is called that is why cubitus varus is more common in this case malunion may occur either because of or not attaining a good reduction or loss of reduction during supply so this is the cubitus varus tumor what is the cubitus varus yes what is cubitus varus decrease of the carrying angle what is carrying angle carrying angle what is carrying angle it is the angle deviated by the forearm now suppose how what is happening id ichese alla thunu vachese angle deviated by the forearm now if you see the structure arm is like this actually arm anatomically should extend like this arm should extend like this but instead of extending the arm the forearm if you see the leg it is almost in line almost in line thigh and leg are almost straight line but if you see the upper limb instead of forearm going straight like this is the imaginary area which should go but it tilted like this this has tilted like this so this angle of deviation of the forearm from the main axis of the arm angle of deviation of the forearm from the main axis of the arm is called cubitus it is called carrying angle the angle deviated by the forearm from the main axis arm is carrying angle but carrying angle okay so that carrying angle if it is decreased if it is decreased it is called if the carrying angle like this even if it comes to neutral also it is cubitus varus if they are in straight it is cubitus varus because the carrying angle decreases if you go this side also it is carrying angle right okay so see this one there is a normal carrying angle here this is no this is normal here there is inside is deviated towards the medial side so this is the this is the normal one this is the carrying angle decrease so this is how this is the cubitus varus deformity is often called gun stock deformity why it is called gun stock deformity it is like this it is the deform like this but if this fellow if this fellow if this if you if you if this fellow lift the upper limb like this see this one it is almost like a gun it lifts like this it is almost like a gun so hence it is called gun stock deformity see this is one the same structure gun stock deformity sometimes the distal fragment may go so posteriorly so it will it will tilt posteriorly and it has the angulation it will unite then it will cause what's called hyperextension it will be hyperextension backward tilt result into hyperextension at the elbow along with the limitation of flexion if there is hyperextension there is limitation of flexion 
basically a change in the arc of the moment. There is an arc of the moment. This arc of the moment is decreased. That is why when you want to observe, if you observe like this one, the arc arcs are different. But in hyper extended L4, this elbow touch this one and it will stop like this because a limitation of the flexion. Treatment is supracondor corrective osteotomy. Paper, paper check. Corrective osteotomy. Now see, now any deformity, you will go through the answers. Any deformity, see the deformity, any deformity. So this is a deformity, varus or valgus. If it is here, it is valgus. If it is upper limb, it is cubitus varus. If it is this side, it is varus. If it is this is varus. If it is in the limb, it is genuvalum. If it is for this, it is genuvalum. So any deformity is like this, dependent side. And the correction is, you have to remove a wedgie, triangle shape of bone, a triangle shape of bone, which is having a base and edge. The triangle area will be having a base and apex. This is the base of the triangle, this is the apex of the triangle. Base, apex, wedge. Now, so remember one important step of uh, correcting any deformity, whatever whether is valgus or where. Now this is the deformity, uh, remove from the convex side, this is convex side, convex side, a bone, triangular piece of bone with base towards the convexity, with base towards the convexity. Suppose if I, take, if I remove a bone piece here, a small bone piece here from this side, base towards the convexity, remove it and then close these, it is straightened now. Base towards the convexity. So whatever it may be. Suppose if it is cubitus virus, suppose if it is cubitus virus, base towards the cubitus virus means it will be like this. So base towards the lateral side. Cubitus virus, how do you correct? Base towards the lateral side. If it is cubitus valgus, base towards the medial side. If it is genuarum, if it is genuarum, if it is genuarum, if it is genuarum, base towards the lateral side. If it is genuvalgum, base towards the medial side. So base towards the convexity. Base towards the convexity. The various names of osteotomies are there, there in the supracondal level. Because the deformity is at this level, because the deformity occurs at this level, osteotomy should be at the site of the pathology. So, the treatment is supracondal corrective osteotomy, French osteotomy. So, this one, so he has corrected it, scubitus virus has corrected it, and then it has become straightened. Myositis ossificans, this is an ectopic, eto ectopic ossific, ectopic beats, ectopic pregnancies. Ectopic, no, it, you, you are unexpectedly it has come, newborn formation. With a thinking that it is a fracture hematoma, newborn formation around the elbow, resulting because there is a frag, this, this bony block has occurred in the anterior aspect most of the time, it is under the brachialis muscle. So you are limiting the flexion and the elbow becomes stiff. So the muscle, usually myositis ossificans will increase with muscles increase with muscle. So, muscle should not be done. Myositis is also going treatment. In the earlier stages, the elbow is put to rest for three weeks. Following this, gentle elbow mobilization slowly. In some late cases, that means if that bone has matured enoughly, first it will be diffuse. First in the, my in the first stage of myositis ossificans, the thing is, the myositis ossificans, in the first stage of myositis ossificans, it is homogeneously diffuse and fluffy. It is not having a solid structure. It will be like this. It will be like this, fluffy. It, there is no linear distribution. It is like this. So what happens? If you try to remove it, it will aggressively form more newborn formation. The process has not started. If you try to remove it, you cause much more hematoma. Again, it will fall apart. Just like you in Puranas, one drop of blood from a giant, another thousand uh, giants are coming, like that. So at that time, what you have to do? You wait until it becomes a neat mass. 
slowly it will become matured and then it will become a neat moss and then if it is in the earlier stages a rest may be sufficient to it and if you until it becomes a neat moss then you get that is called delineation until the delineation in some cases excision of the myocyte is born or excision of or somebody if it is not possible if it has the joint has already damaged then what is called they what then you have to replace them to the joint any answer for joint is replacement nowadays replacement workman's schema difference is workman's schema is an acute condition you have to treat by fasciotomy or by improvisation of blood supply workman's ischemic contracture is a is a late condition the end result of a workman's ischemia end result of any compartmental syndrome is workman's ischemic contracture the flexor muscles have become contracted the flexor muscles muscles have become contracted and hence because they are contracted the the fingers are contracted the fingers are contracted because of the contracture of the flexor muscles okay malla stava nu stavi sare the flexor muscles are contracted so because of the contracture of the flexor muscles flexor muscles are contracted like this the fingers are contracted because of the contracture of the profundus flexor pollicis longus etc so if they are contracted if you try to flex the elbow this contraction may not be stretched it may become loose at that muduk it like that so the flexor are contracted if you flex the wrist already contracted you are becoming more and more loose so they are not they are not problematic but once you extend it this contraction is becoming much more stiff so the fingers will become much more contracted if you extend it already contracted muscle will try to pull more and more then the fingers are more contracted so there is a claw like hand once you flex it the claw will dis- will reduce for some time but once you extend it it will become more and more that is what is called workman sign that is what is called workman sign if you flex the wrist they will become the con- contracture will be less and the claw will be less in but if you tighten it it will become more and more so in a, in a, in a tight end contracture if you flex it it will become loose hence there if you end, if you try to backwards it will stretch more take the example of a <coughs> take the example of a bow either from rama or arjuna this is a bow this is the string now it is a tight end these are all bones the solid part is the bone the forearm bones the carpal bones the phalanges everything like this one and these contain these are the muscles that is muscles of the forearm that is flexor and then become tendon and finally it go to the tendons and they will insert to the finger this is the medial epicondyle part the common flexors come from the medial epicondyle and they ultimately reach the finger this is the bony part bony part contain forearm bones etc now in the flocksman is ischemic contracture the muscles the muscles are tight the this string will become very very tight very very tight when when you try to extend this that means when you try to extend it it will be much more tight so the claw is becoming more and more so the ultimate treatment of workman ischemic contracture is even if you extend also they should be loose even you extend also they should be loose otherwise when you extend it grip is not there it is like this when you flex it you can take the fingers like this but in a flexion grip will not be powerful you can remove it easily grip will be powerful only in extension only in extension so that's why the cricket fellow will catch figure like this not like this he will catch it like this because it will be more grip in extension so we want an extension without clawing if you want to extend it it is clawing becoming more so you want an extension without clawing that is the principle in the workman's scheme contract treatment how do you treat it then you can do one thing this string is there this string is there remove the knot here and try to attach here it will become loose this string is attached here try to be advanced here 
the string is attached here I try to adjust to here it will become loose or you can lengthen the string give another string you can lengthen the string or you can remove a part of the this one and then join it will lose so you can do what is called relieve from this area to this one string is less or you can lengthen it you can lay it or you can remove a part of the hard part and then join together they will release so these are the things in a workman system contractor so if you can release this is the bow i am talking about if you can relieve the flexors origin from medial epicondyle and let them glide down now it is loose if you can lengthen the tendons if you can lengthen the tendons lengthening of the tendon by that plastic that plastic lengthen the tendon it is loose or if you can cut short the forearm bones or remove the carpal bones it will be loose that is the treatment of workman's ischemic contracture so all the three you can do now you, let us see marked atrophy of the forearm while flexion deformity of the wrist and fingers skin over the forearm and hand is dry and scaly because of ischemia nails also so atrophic changes that is the workman's ischemia see this this is the one so when you try to extend they will become more and more clot so when you try to release this part of thread part of the bow, bow they will become loose so for that you can release the origin or you can tendon lengthening or you can cut short the muscles that is the workman sign workman sign help to decide the cause of the flexion of the fingers in this sign it is possible to extend the fingers fully at the interphalangeal joint only when the wrist is flexed only when the wrist is flexed extending the wrist so in a in a workman sign if you flex it the fingers will nicely extend because of the looseness but once you extend it <coughs> because of the contracture they will become on extending the wrist the fingers get flexed at the interphalangeal joint and extending they will flex it and are not useless this is because when the wrist is extended the short and flexor muscle tendon unit is stretched over the front of the wrist resulting in the flexion of fingers a necrosis of forearm muscles resulting in workman's ischemic contracture so then there is a what is called splint the splint when you, when you want to keep the limbs keep this uh, wrist into the extension portion there is a knuckle bender splint the splint we use it to keep the fingers in extended knuckle bender splint knuckle bender splint like that if this knuckle is there this is knuckle bender splint it is a claw like hand you have to keep the knuckle bender splint what is claw hand at the yes it is extension hyper extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint flexion at the interphalangeal joint flexion at the interphalangeal this is a reverse of the lumbrical position lumbrical position means lumbrical action what is the action of lumbricals flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint extension at this this is what is called cord position cord holding position playing cord playing position playing cords holding position this is the playing cord holding position that is called lumbrical position if you reverse it it will become what is called claw hand this claw hand can be due to some causes one it can be due to leprosy it can be due to workman's ischemic contracture it can be due to the advanced case of rheumatoid arthritis it can be due to the low median low ulna nerve palsy it can be due to clumpkies lower brachial plexus injuries it can be due to the suppurative conditions of the hand these are the claw hand now in all these things except in workman's ischemia the rest of don't won't show the workman sign Workman sign is the only area where Workman's ischemic contracture is the only condition where you show the Workman sign positive. In the case of leprosy, even if you flex it, even if you extend it, the problem is there. So for but 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 for all claw hand deformities, the treatment is the knuckle bender splint. Knuckle bender splint means it try to keep the knuckles bending. It try to prevent keep to keep try to keep it like this. It try to keep the knuckles. mild deformity workman ischemia can be corrected by passive stretching of the contracture muscle using a turn buckle splint workman splint mild deformity moderate deformity soft tissue sliding operation that i told you flexor muscles released from their origin at the medial epicondyle and ulna that is max phase operation severe deformity bony operations shortening of the forearm bones or carpal bone 
so that's it that's it thank you very much